What? What? Stop it. What's up, YouTube? This is your boy John from Project Ellsworth, and I am back with you today for episode five of Fright Flick Friday. You know something on your nose, brother. Welcome to Fright Flick Friday. This is my series where I just briefly review the movies that I've watched during the week and let you know what I thought of them. This week, unfortunately, I was only able to get the three movies, but they were pretty, three pretty decent ones, I thought. First up, we got to Candy Corn. I thought that this was okay. I received this last year as a gift from a good buddy of mine, Joe, here on YouTube. No Joe in my personal uh, life as well. Haven't seen him in a lot of years, but I actually went to school with Joe. So one day last week or the week before, he asked me if I had seen that yet. And I said, you know what? Let me do this dude a solid. He sent me this movie. So I pulled it off the shelf, threw it upstairs, and it took me a couple days, but I finally did get to it. Candy Corn is basically the story. It's a, a bully story, bully revenge type story. <clears throat> Group of guys basically bully a kid, wind up beating him to death ultimately. And uh, this kid is involved with a circus or a traveling freak show. Uh, this kid, they manage to, some and one in particular manages to resurrect this kid, slaps a mask on him, and then the kid starts, uh, you know, extracting his revenge on everybody that was involved in his murder. I thought this, was, this movie was pretty decent. Uh, nothing outstanding. Nobody's winning any awards for this movie. But I thought it was all right. <coughs> Pardon me. <clears throat> no COVID. I would say that my favorite thing about this movie, honestly, though, was the actual look of the killer in this movie. After they brought this guy back to life and they put this mask on him, he looked pretty badass. He, he was a really cool character. I enjoyed it. Uh, but the movie overall, it was all right. It was nothing fantastic, like I said, but it was an okay flick. Next up, here's a movie I'm actually kind of ashamed that I have not ever seen. But I finally made it a point to pull this one and watch this as well. Cape Fear. I've never seen Cape Fear. As amazing as that is, as many movies as I've watched in my life, as much as I like Robert De Niro, as much as I dig um, Martin Scorsese's work, I somehow Cape Fear slipped under my radar and I didn't see it. I wouldn't say it slipped under my radar exactly. I've known about Cape Fear forever, but I finally got around to watching it. And I got to tell you, I, when I was finally done watching it, I was even more upset and, and let down by the fact that I never watched this movie. It is a fantastic movie. Nick Nolte is awesome. Uh, Jessica Lange is awesome. Uh, what's the girl's name? Can't remember the girl's name. Juliette Lewis. She's really young in this movie, and she was awesome. Robert De Niro is is breathtaking in this movie he's scary as hell just an absolute freak uh the the martin scorsese it, it's the typical martin scorsese scazy uh film scazy martin scorsese now whatever martin scorsese film tons of smoking tons of cussing tons of brutal violence and it is friggin' spectacular in cape fear if you're someone out there who like me managed to go the last 20 plus years without seeing Cape Fear, do yourself a huge solid, find Cape Fear, and watch it immediately. It's fantastic. This story, the crib notes here, or the brief story here, Nick Nolte is a lawyer. Nick, Dol Nick Nolte was representing um, uh, Robert De Niro's character in court. Robert De Niro's character was accused of raping someone uh, Nick Nolte was representing him and let something fall through the cracks so that De Niro's character would go to jail. That's what happened. De Niro eventually got out of jail and started to look for Nick Nolte. And I'm going to leave it at that. Watch Cape Fear. It's fabulous. And finally, I got around to watching The Burning. I just watched that with my wife today, and it was great. It was really, really good. 
it has all of the 1980s goodness that you're expecting. There was one dude in this movie who was uh, in Fast Times at Ridgemont High. I recognized him immediately. So, and he didn't look very much different. Uh, give or take a little bit of age here and there. But I, I, I'd say for the most part, he looked like he looked in Fast Times at Ridgemont High, which tells me this movie, I didn't even look to see what year this movie was made. And I don't know off the top of, that, of my head what year Fast Times at Ridgemont High was made, but he looked very similar, so I'm assuming that this movie was made around that that time period. It has the, the campiness and the look of a Friday the 13th movie. And uh, it had a couple familiar faces in there. He was in there, uh, and there was another, like the main girl in the movie. Don't remember her name. Didn't bother to look up the actress's name. I didn't check that at all. But she looked familiar. Like I said, there's a couple familiar faces. Uh, when the credits were rolling, I found out that this was a Harvey Weinstein product, or project, I should say. And then when I was watching the bonus features, I found out that this was the first movie that was created under the, the Miramax name. And as soon as I saw that it was a Harvey Weinstein thing, I had to make a comment to my wife. I was like, oh great, it's a Harvey Weinstein thing. Uh, and then I almost felt gross that, that, that he's the guy who created this movie. And this was like the, the beginning of what ultimately is, I mean, call it what you will, but his career has been pretty legendary as far as filmmaking and Miramax goes and the actors that he's worked with. And what that guy has done is legendary. But don't let that take away from the fact that he's a freaking scumbag. Um, obviously only my opinion, of course and probably a lot of yours as well. But when I saw his name attached to this movie, my mind was immediately distracted by, I wonder if this dude messed with any of the girls in this movie, because they're all very young. They're not anybody who's wildly famous, so they're probably trying to make a name for themselves. Uh, themselves. Harvey Weinstein was obviously much younger hopefully better looking because the guy now looks like a like an aged koala bear gross whatever but that's where my mind immediately went when i put on the burning and i saw his name was did that monster assault any of these women in the movie take that out of you know out, out of the picture and the burning was really good typical 80s slasher pretty cool killer very interesting weapon of choice um, tom savini was behind all of the effects in this movie. So you know you got top-notch practical effects for you know for what this movie was back in the 80s. And I thought that was really good. And you can see there's the the, the typical Tom Savini stuff in the movie. The, you'll know it when you see it. I'm not gonna get into all that. This isn't a Tom Savini review. This is a review of the burning. So overall, I would absolutely say check out the burning. I think it's fantastic. Most of you have probably seen it. I kind of slept on that movie too for some reason. And then I bought it from a Scream Factory and forgot that I bought it. It's just, it's a whole thing. I've been so stinking busy lately. I'm, it's a wonder I forget, don't forget who I am. See, I forgot how to talk, obviously. I would say that my favorite movie of the week was definitely Cabin Fever, or Cabin Fever. Wow, didn't watch Cabin Fever this week. Was Cape Fear. Cape Fear was easily the best movie I watched during the week. Um, my least favorite was definitely Candy Corn. Not to say I didn't like it, I thought it was good, but if you have to pick one as your favorite, you gotta pick one as your least favorite. So, Cape Fear was the best, Candy Corn was my least favorite, and The Burning, I only watched three, The Burning is right down the middle. That's it for this week's uh, Friday, uh, Fright Flick Friday. Sorry I didn't get to more. I wanted to get to more. Life got in the way this week. I had way too much to do. Wanted to watch a movie or two today, but I got some uh, appliances delivered to the house and my whole day was flipped up in the air. You don't care about that at all in any way whatsoever. So I'm gonna get out of here. If you guys like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you really like this video and you've been enjoying my content up to this point, please do me a huge personal favor. Click that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other, have a kick-ass day, and thank you for watching. Later, folks.